Hello, my name is J.E. Paris, second prince to the 521 Club and Dominus Master of the House of Paris. This is film number three in my series of instructional films on Gottwe and the 521 Club. In the last film, I went through what the 521 Club is and all its appendages. So now let's move on to the next big question. In this film, I'll be answering the question of what is the GOTWE? GOTWE is simply an acronym for the game of the white elephant. So the next question is, what is that? What white elephant? What game? Well, before we get into elephants and the game I'm talking about, let's discuss for a moment the roots of our game, which includes its history, both abroad and within the 521 Club. Most of you might have heard about our game but may know it under other names. The following are a few of those names. Yankee Swap, Dirty Santa, Gift War, Grinch Exchange, Rob Your Neighbor, Nasty Christmas, Black Santa, Chinese Gift Exchange, Thieving Secret Santa, or simply as a gift exchange party. It is also known as a white elephant gift exchange. No matter what you call it, it is the same game and played by the exact same rules. It's sort of like all those variations on Monopoly you see in the stores. Everything from Star Wars to Playboy Monopoly. All in all, it plays under the same rules and same mathematics as the original 1930s board game of Monopoly. Now in this film, I'm not going to get into the rules as we play it, but I'll cover the basic rules which other people play by. The name we operate under is the game of the white elephant. What we did in our game is we took the original rules of the game and over the last two decades have not only tailored them to our needs, but have created a much more organized and detailed game which includes many more rules than its origin had. The history of the original game dates back to the early 19th century. While the original name remains an item of contention among historians, one theory suggests that Ezra Cornell brought the term into the popular lexicon through his frequent social gatherings as early as 1828. Even though we have modified the original rules to fine tune it to our needs, I think it's important to cover the original basic rules. Understanding the basic rules will help you understand how we have changed them when I go over them in the next film. Now I have reviewed a lot of other films on YouTube which are made with shaky cameras, filming drunk hosts, trying to explain the game while talking over all the other guests who were also consuming way too much alcohol. And I thought that it was time to state the original rules cleanly and without a drink in my hand so the audience understands. In its most basic form, each participant supplies one wrapped gift. The gifts are placed in a central location, and players determine in what order they will take turns selecting them. Usually, they just draw a number from a hat. The first player opens a wrapped gift, and the turn ends. On subsequent turns, each player gets the choice of stealing any unwrapped item or choosing a wrapped one from the gift pile. When a player's gift is stolen, they can choose to steal an open gift from another player or select a replacement gift from the pile of wrapped presents. Each turn ends when a gift from the pile is unwrapped. The game is over when the last person has taken their turn. Say it. I'm keeping the earrings. That's what I that was the Matt? Solar I know, yes. Oh, Billy Ned, oh, tell us the game is over. The game is now over. Oh, I mean, each gift can be stolen three times. Once it is stolen three different times, then it is considered dead and remains with its final owner. This is to expedite the game to its conclusion. The last player is allowed to trade with any player whose gift has not been declared dead. All in all, the rules are pretty simple and the game is meant to be more of a mixer party game than anything to be taken too seriously. 
Most of the gifts at these games are either items, usually junk, from the attic or purchased items, which the cost is no more than $20. So this explains the basic rules of the game. As I mentioned before, in the next film, we'll take these basic rules and expand them so as to explain how we play the game within the House of Paris. Now, allow me to briefly explain how we arrived with the name for our game. We extracted the whole gift exchange part out of it because it's an incorrect term to our game. We don't exchange gifts. We steal the gift outright, no matter how it hurts the victim. Of course, as we will cover in the coming films, we have upped the stakes to our game to the point that losing an item can be quite painful, which is our desired effect. One of the biggest problems we run into in trying to recruit people into our game is they identify with the rules which I had just covered since most people have only played by those rules. We have to go to a lot of trouble to explain that ours is not the silly office Chinese Christmas played throughout the nation. In our game, we went through many name changes as we modified the rules. When we began in 1995, we played the original way using the rules I just described to you. Originally, we operated under the name of Chinese Christmas. Then, in 1998, we realized that our family was bringing in more and more in-laws by marriages. And so we officially changed the name to be Paris Chinese Christmas so that those in-laws would remember who was running the show. Then, in 2004, some of our more Marxist liberal members of the House of Paris protested that we were insulting the Chinese by calling it the Paris Chinese Christmas. As master of the House of Paris, I quickly put a stop to that politically correct baloney and made an addition to our official name for the event. We began calling it the Paris Chinese Communist Christmas, which really annoyed the leftists in the family. This is where the famous PC3 logo came from. Then, in 2006, we decided that 521 White Elephant should be added to the name because we wanted to emphasize the 521 Club and began to use the White Elephant as a mascot during the game. In 2007, we banned liberals from our game under order number three as a sanction. We wanted to keep the logo of PC3, but felt that since the radical left in this country had elected a known liberal Marxist to the White House, we decided that naming our game after communists was no longer a joke, as it had been in the 90s. So we altered the name to be 521 White Elephant Paris Consumption Capitalist Christmas. By 2011, the war within the House of Paris had been raging for four years between liberal communist Marxists and constitutional conservatives. Beginning this year in 2013, we once again have made a radical change to the name. Since 2005, we have moved the date of the party away from Christmas and closer to New Year's, so the party became more of a New Year's party than a Christmas party. Also, so long as we kept Christmas in the name, non-family members felt uncomfortable that they were somehow invading on our family Christmas. Our friends have no problem with Christmas, but rather did not want to invade a time which is mostly kept to families. Also, with order number 10 in 2010, and then order number 15 in 2012, we lifted the sanctions against liberals, allowing them to come to the party. Only a small number returned, though. The rest remains in a Marxist mindset. But let it not be said that we conservatives are the ones holding them back. <coughs> we decided also that the name had become too long, and it was time to streamline and get it down to its basics. That's how we came up with the Game of the White Elephant as our permanent name. Well, at least permanent for now. I'll let you know if it changes. So I hope that helps shed some light on the name of the game and 
and how we got from there to here. Thank you for watching this film and I hope you watch all the other films in this series. The next question I'll answer in the next film will be, how have we within the 521 Club and more specifically the House of Paris changed those rules over the last two decades? I will take you step by step through each of the rules to date. By the time I get finished with you, you will qualify to serve in the role of our judge advocate position. Again, thanks for checking out my films, and I will see you on the other side in the next film.